Welcome back to the Prescribe Burn Workshop. In this video, we're going to cover the calibration of the Kestrel handheld weather station. For those of you who have never used a Kestrel weather station, it can tell you two really important pieces of information, and that is the current relative humidity as well as the current wind speed while you're in the field. They respond very quickly and are very accurate. It is unlikely that the need to obtain this information in the field will ever be as important to a prescribed burn firefighter as it will be to a wildland firefighter. After all, we get to choose the wind speed and the humidity we want to start a fire in. You don't really have that luxury as a wildland firefighter. Having said that though, this is still an important tool. I still use it. It needs calibration every year and in this video we're going to cover how to do that. Here's a look at the equipment you're going to need to calibrate your Kestrel. You're going to need the instructions, and you can find this at this link here. Um, from Kestrel itself, you'll need your uh, weather station. You will also need a couple of small plastic containers, and this can be anything. Um, this is going to hold the salt solution, so you're going to need uh, one for magnesium, one for uh, the sodium chloride test. And then you're going to need a container that is fairly small. You want, as you put these together, the, what's working against you is the volume of air inside this container. So you want as small a volume as possible. I've seen people use Ziploc bags for this. Um, the only thing I don't like about a Ziploc bag is it can get the, the salts on your meter. It won't harm the meter, but it's a pain to have to clean that meter off and then start over. You'll need a heat sink, possibly. If you're doing this, in, this inside the way I did, you aren't going to need a heat sink at all. Um, this heat sink needs to be the same temperature as your thermometer and the same temperature as your salts and the water you mix the salts with. So once you get that all mixed up, the likelihood that the same temperature is pretty close to zero. So you're going to want to sit, let this all sit overnight. And you open up your cooler, drop it inside the cooler, leave the lid off the cooler, let everything in there e equilibrate, then put the lid on, and you're ready to begin. And usually that takes, you know, to be safe, they say let it go overnight. So I think in the instructions they say uh, 10 hours. You'll need uh, canning salt or salt with nothing added. Um, so you want plain salt, nothing added. Then you need magnesium chloride. Magnesium chloride is a, a little hard to, to find easily on the web if you don't know what you're looking for. This is pure magnesium chloride. There was no water molecules added. When you add this to water, it is a slightly exothermic reaction. And this gets hot enough that it will shatter the bottom off of one of these. If you have just a couple of inches of water in the bottom of here, and add that magnesium chloride, it'll get hot enough that it'll crack the bottom of that. So it's false to say it's slight exothermic. Um, this one, this already has water um, attached to the molecule, that is the magnesium chloride has not been completely dried out, and it actually is exothermic. It's mildly exothermic. If you put your hand on the, on the bottom of the uh, container when it's heating up, you'll feel the heat. The problem this will make for you is as this heats up, it's now substantially warmer than all the rest of your test equipment. So this has to have time to cool off. So if you mix magnesium chloride up in here, this has to sit out for you know, an hour or so to let that cool back down. If you rush it, this not only is going to be hotter, which is going to throw off your Kestrel, but it's also giving off humidity because it's really hot and the water is vaporizing off very quickly, which is also going to throw off your Kestrel. So the first two runs, our biggest mistake was just not letting that cool off and reach room temperature. One of the cheapest places to get magnesium chloride on the web is just to go to an aquarium supply uh, website and get their magnesium chloride. This is, uh, I think, one gallon, so like six pounds of magnesium chloride. You're going to need half a cup at most. So if you buy one of these, take the rest of it to a burn and hand it off to other people who need to calibrate their equipment. This often is sold as magnesium chloride hexahydrate. And all that means on the end of the magnesium chloride, MgCl2, is water. Water is actually attached to this molecule. If it's been dried, um, clear down to just magnesium chloride, it tends to be really exothermic when you add the water. It gets really hot, as I was just saying. If there's water attached, then it's not nearly as exothermic. Um, the hexa is six, so this has six water molecules attached to it. You can find this with several different variations with different numbers of water molecules attached. In fact, sometimes they just say MgCl2 parentheses water molecule H2O with an X out at the end representing some number. Um, but that's what you're looking for, the magnesium chloride or magnesium hexa hexahydrate. Both of those will work. It's dirt cheap online. If you have a friend or know someone who has a salt water tank, there's a good chance they have a whole gallon of this sitting in their house and need something to do with it. So you can probably get it for free if you know someone in that situation. The other thing you're going to need, a thermometer. 
and a relative humidity equilibrium table. What this table will tell you is the humidity level above each of these salt mixtures at different temperatures. Kestrel wants you, wants you to calibrate their sensor at 25 degrees C. The probability that you're at 25 degrees C is pretty small. This building, while a controlled environment, is at 20 degrees C. So instead of using Kestrel's 32 point, and it's actually 32.78, Kestrel rounds up to 32.3, instead of setting it at 32.3, I set my sensor at 33.1 because that's the humidity that will be in that chamber at 20 degrees C. So this table, particularly if you're setting it up in the field, is really, really important. So the proper mixing is to have a saturated solution. And if you look at this, I have, this is a salt water solution, and you can see that there's no salt standing on the bottom. That, this, that is, this solution isn't saturated. This solution, on the other hand, is seriously saturated. So there's a whole bunch of salt sitting on the bottom and water on top. And what we'll end up with up here, just above that water line, is the, exact, the actual humidity, humidity we want. And if I seal this up with saran wrap or whatever, this whole chamber will fill up with a specific humidity based on the salt and based on the temperature of this whole container. The more water you have in here, the longer it's going to take for that to reach uh, the humidity we want. So what we want is a whole lot less water. And ideally what we want is, and I don't know if you can see this very well, is salt that's basically kind of like wet sand. We want it completely wet, but we don't want it so wet that we have standing water on top. Standing water on top won't hurt even if it's just a little bit of standing water. If you've uh, mixed it up too much, one of the things you can do is pour off some of that water until you end up with your wet sand or wet salt. And so this is seriously wet salt. And that's perfect. That's really, really ideal. And it will allow this chamber to very quickly acclimate to uh, the humidity uh, for this salt and this temperature. Mixing up magnesium chloride can be a bit more of a pain. Magnesium chloride tends to uh, dissolve very, very quickly in water. And if you look at this here, I have the, the granules and they're wet. This is perfect. This is ideal. If you let this sit out very long, you'll end up with something like this. And I have a lot of water standing on top, but if you look in the side, I still have a lot of my granules. I mean, it's still a super saturated solution. This will still work. It'll work just fine. Again, it's just like the salt. You want this to be wet, kind of like wet sand. It takes very, very, very little water to turn this completely to a liquid. It dissolves really nicely. So if you add too much water to your sample, you can actually dry it back out by uh, putting it in an oven. This one we've just been letting sit in the oven, and you'll end up with these flaky crusts and a pretty heavy sludge. And this is actually almost the right consistency for uh, the mix that we want. So it's really easy to dry these out. You can do the same with the salt. You can actually evaporate this back out, put it in a pan and dry it out, but it's so much easier just to grab another couple tablespoons of salt and do it again. All right, to start this setup, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, or the goal of this initial uh, phase, the first 10 hours, is to get everything here to the same temperature. So we have our heat sink. We'll put that in there. And I didn't need that inside. Um, if you're out in the field, you might need it. We have a magnesium chloride um, in our salt solution. And this is going to start you on the magnesium chloride. So, so then we're going to put in our uh, temperature probe. And to do this for each Kestrel, it's a little different. For the uh, 3000, you hold down the left arrow, press this. And this is P1. So this is for set point one and we want to hit our menu and so this is what I'm setting it at for this uh, humidity reading or for this temperature. Then it's asking for P2 and I'm setting it at 75.5 for the salt solution at this temperature and then it's telling it for calibration 1. The next time I hit that it'll start its one hour calibration. Well I don't want it to go for at least 10 hours and so I'm going to seal this up and this is going to do two things. The humidity in here is going to reach uh, the level that I want it to, particularly the humidity trapped in that cord. And we're going to put this in the chamber for 10 hours. And that will allow that to get to the right temperature. We also want in here our salt solution so that it has the opportunity to reach the same temperature. We'll throw in our thermometer. That will allow us to check it. 
and we're going to let that set for 10 hours. So tomorrow, we'll let that set, and tomorrow we'll come back and actually start the uh, calibration process. All right, so it's been a little over 12 hours. We're going to start our calibration process, and I want to check my temperature real quick. Make sure that is right where I left it. It's 20 degrees, dead on. We're going to start with the magnesium. That's what this starts with. And to do this, then all I'm going to do is open this up, pop my center calibration button. And you don't want to open this up too much if you can avoid it. You want to keep that humidity the same. Now this is going to run for an hour. And we will put a thermometer back in there and let that run for an hour. It is now the first part of this uh, calibration is actually to let the chamber get back up to the humidity and temperature it's supposed to be at. So for the first hour it's actually not doing much. It's setting its calibration point right at the end of this. All right, now we're done with the um, mercury chloride, mercury chloride, magnesium chloride, and I need to switch over to the sodium chloride. So I'm going to pull this out. I'll hit my button to switch over to P2 or C2, calibration point 2. We'll get that in there. And I actually don't have to throw the magnesium chloride back in there, but I'm going to just keep track of it. So we're ready to go. This will now have to sit another hour. That'll have to sit another hour uh, for the, it to calibrate or equilibrate inside the salt solution, get the humidity inside that chamber correct. Then I'll come back in an hour, hit start, and we'll go again. All right, so it's set an hour in the sodium chloride. It's adjusting to the, the humidity that's inside here. The temperature should all be the same. So now all I have to do is hit the menu button pretty quickly. Now it has started uh, for the final calibration test. And it has to sit in here for an hour. Um, again, it's just really for the first part of this hour. It's just adjusting to the humidity inside that chamber since I've opened it. The actual calibration doesn't take place until the, the last portion of that hour. But we'll be back in an hour and see what we have. All right, so we're at the end of the uh, sodium chloride test. And when this one is over, you'll see in flashing on this. And 75.5 is quickly dropping out of this down. So just after calibration, setting them down under a fan, I have 36.7 and 36.8. Well, that's all there is. The most important aspect of this whole process is to maintain temperature for all the components involved in the calibration process. This is why you need the 10-hour block of time the night before to let everything that that, that probe is going to touch come to the same temperature. The other key aspect to this calibration is to make sure that the Kestrel meter knows exactly what the humidity is in the sample chamber that it's in during the calibration. If you're running your calibration at 25 degrees C, then you're all set. Follow the directions exactly. But if you're calibrating at any different temperature, you're going to need to know what the humidity is above that salt for that given temperature. And if you have those two aspects down, you're going to be able to hit this dead on. The only other problem that I had was having either too much air space for the humidity to adjust to. So I originally set this up in some fairly large jugs, and it, it just couldn't adjust in time in the one hour time block. Um, the other problem I had was just too much water in the salt solution, and I found that if I went to a smaller container and drained off most of that water, it calibrated nicely. Well, that's really all there is. If you have questions or comments, or if you do it a more efficient way, please post that information down below. This has been another production of the Dome College Prescribed Burn Program.